Hey traders, welcome back to another daily profit and loss recap video. Today is Tuesday, July 25th. I just finished up trading for the morning and I locked in $741 in profits. I had two winning trades and one losing trade. And in this video, we're going to talk about all three of these trades, talk about my entry points, my exit points, as well as my thought process behind each of these trades so that hopefully you can take something from my trading and apply it to your own. All right, so let's not waste any time. The first trade for me today that we're going to discuss is with the stock BFRG. BFRG, we can see, of course, is a stock that was gapping up this morning in pre-market. The gray background section here is the pre-market session. And then once the market opens, the background switches to white. So all of this that we're seeing is happening in pre-market. And uh, we can see it has a very strong trend going into the open, higher highs, higher lows, holding above the VWAP. And while in general that is of course a sign of strength, when you're seeing that happen into the open, you have to keep in mind that most of the volume is going to come in at the market open. Less volume is traded in the pre-market sessions even when there is a really strong run like we had with BFRG. So a stock that's running up all the way up until it's open is usually actually going to be a little bit more of a risky trade. So because of that, there were two ways that I was going to trade this. Either we were going to get an opening range breakout and I was going to look for a very quick scalp up to the $6 area, or it was going to pull back and start forming a little bit of support, and I was going to buy into that support area using the morning low to risk off of. Okay, so we see that we have an opening range breakout level up here of $5.75. So if we draw that on the chart, that is the price that we're looking for to break in order to get in for that opening range breakout. And you can see that there is a few times where it pushes up just below that level and then gets immediately rejected back down. So there was never any opening range breakout to buy into. So because of that, once I saw that it was starting to kind of consolidate right around this $5 level and in the low fives, I decided to take a starter position in on this dip. My average price was right under the VWAP at the time. Um, I believe it was at about $5.14. And my plan was if we got another one of those pops up into that 575 area, I was going to lock in a portion of my profits and then hold the rest of my shares ideally for the $6 area. Um, but we can see obviously it started to reject the view app a little bit, started to finally break down under five, broke down underneath that morning low. And like I mentioned, when I was looking to buy the dip, in that case, the way that I find a risk level is by using that morning low. So once it started to break down underneath that low, I had to cut losses on the trade and I ended up with a loss of $258 on that trade. All right, moving on to the next trade. This was the stock ELBM. ELBM was another one that was gapping up this morning in pre-market. We can see it has this big move up to 304 in the early pre-market session, pulls back down to under $2 per share and kind of just trades sideways and consolidates right around that $2 level into the open. So this to me, even though it was a weaker setup in general because the pre-market action was overall kind of to the downside um, since it hit that high very early on in the pre-market session, it was still a better candidate in my opinion for a gap and go than BFRG was even though BFRG was spiking up and making higher highs and higher lows all the way into the open. And that's just because there are going to be so many people looking to take profits into that move at the open with BFRG as opposed to something like ELBM, which is kind of just consolidating and trading sideways. Okay, so what we see happen here is we get ourselves an opening range breakout. If we take a look at the opening range breakout levels posted in the Market Master Group, ELBM had an opening range breakout level of $2.35. So if we were to draw that on our charts, we can see this is going to be our opening range breakout level. Um, pretty quickly, as soon as it forms, we get a little bit of a small pullback down to about $2.22. It immediately is bought right back up, starts to push back through that opening range breakout level. That's where I took a starter position in this trade. Uh, we see that it ramps up to a high then of $2.65 before it ends up being rejected straight back down. So I missed out on that first move, didn't lock in profits quick enough, so I had to hold through this pullback. But then I sold a portion of my shares as it bounced back up into that area, added back some shares as it pulled back into the VWAP, and locked in my profits once again into this pop that happened here up in the $2.50 area. So I ended up on that trade with $169 in profits. It was a relatively small profit, even though I did trade it pretty well. And that's just because I had very small position sizes with uh, each of my trades in this stock. But all in all, it was a pretty solid scalp trade opportunity this morning. 
quick shout out to some of the traders in the Market Master Group who started off with a nice green profitable trade today thanks to the opening range breakout in ELBM. Again, for those of you that are just watching this video on YouTube and you're not part of the Market Master Group yet, all of these trades are talked about in real time in the group, so it's not just me capitalizing on these trade opportunities. Our team of traders is doing the same thing. All right, anyway, but with all of that being said, the next trade for me today was with the stock VRM. This has been kind of a slow and steady mover this morning. This was in the Market Master Group trade plans last night, and the reason for that is because if we take a look down here at the daily chart, we can see this has been a very strong momentum stock lately over the past month or so, really over the past two months actually. And we can see that yesterday on Monday, we have this pullback into this area of trendline support and into the 20 period simple moving average, which has been acting as support as well. And we see that there is a very strong bullish candle that happens on the daily chart from that area, pulls back, bounces straight back up. And this long lower wick is a bullish sign heading into today for Tuesday. Okay, so that is why this was you know, in my trade plans and that's why I ended up trading this stock. So we see that right at the market open, kind of just trade sideways a bit. We get this push up to the $2.19 high for the morning, and then it starts to pull back closer to that level of trend line support once again. Uh, so I actually took a starter position in this pretty much right away at the market open, and that is just because I was a fan of this setup in general from the trade plans. I then added some shares into this pullback down here as it got closer and closer to that level of trend line support. I knew that my risk level in this case was going to be underneath the low of the previous day, and the previous day's low was $1.97. So this was a pretty low risk setup, so I was comfortable adding into this pullback. And then once we see that it starts to curl back up, break above the VWAP, and then we get this nice high volume spike here through the $2.20 level, I added some more shares once again. I ended up with a total of 4,500 shares, and my average price was right at about $2.15. And we can see this ended up being a really nice mover this morning, just climbing higher and higher and higher. And I locked in my profits up here in the 230s and ended up with a total profit of $830 in profits on that trade, which brought my profits for the day up to $741. All right, so to wrap up the video, I want to start talking about some of the questions that are asked in the Market Master Group. Even though I answer them in the group, I want to share this information with people that are just watching on YouTube as well. And uh, one of the questions that we had today is from one of our newer traders in the group. They're dealing, of course, with the PDT or the pattern day trader rule. And they said that I've heard a couple people recommending starting off with CMEG. If you have a little capital to get started, what do you think of that? I'm a little hesitant to have my money offshore and to deal with wire transfers. So obviously the PDT role is something that pretty much all of us have had to deal with at one point or another in our trading journey. And it can definitely be a pain, but there are some ways to kind of work around it a little bit and to make things a little bit better without having to deal with offshore brokers and without having to deal, of course, with those sketchy wire transfers. One of the solutions, shout out to Laura for mentioning this in the chat, is to have a cash account with an American brokerage. With a cash account, there is no pattern day trader rule. You just have to wait three days for your cash to settle. And that's something that a lot of traders don't realize. The pattern day trader rule only applies to a margin account. So if you have a cash account, even though it does take between two to three days for that cash to settle after each trade, there is no pattern day trader rule. So even dealing with that waiting period, you can usually end up executing more than three day trades per five business days the way that you would be able to with the pattern day trader rule. So that's one way to kind of work around things. The other way that I always recommend for newer traders is to look into splitting up your funds into several accounts. For example, you could have one account with TD Ameritrade, you could have one account with Interactive Brokers, or whatever broker it is that you prefer to trade with. And the reason for that is because you are going to get three day trades per five business days in each of those accounts. So if you have two accounts, you can have six day trades. If you have three accounts, you can have nine day trades. And on top of that, it's a good way to manage your risk because now you don't have all of your money in one single account which is going to prevent you from being able to put all of your funds into one single trade. All right, so I hope that was helpful and I hope you enjoyed me recapping my trades today in this video. If you did, please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want to hear about the stocks that I'm trading in real time, as well as work with our team of traders, get access to our day trade and swing trade alerts, our detailed trade plans, our live custom scanner streams, and so on and so forth. All of that is found in the Market Master Group and there's going to be a link down below in the description for you to get signed up.
But anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed and good luck with your trading.